Today on the bench I have my uh, old Sinclair ZX80. The plastic is intact but fairly bit yellowed. And um, if you open it up you can see the circuit. It's a Z80, some RAM and uh, some TTL gates that used to generate the video. The keyboard decoder is done using some diodes down here. And uh, that's basically it inside this little machine. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work. And uh, I can say that with confidence because the voltage regulator is messing up here. And that's probably it for today because there should be a little aluminium heat sink. Hey, look at that. Um, but there's no heat sink, so I have to make one tomorrow. <coughs> Okay, and uh, I'm now back with my little St. Clair and I bent a piece of aluminium and cut it to shape. Okay, so I've switched it on and it still doesn't work properly. There are two things that bothers me. Uh, one is that there's no video output. The other thing is that the voltage regulator doesn't get hot and with uh, something like 20 TTL gates and a CPU and some very old dial RAM and ROM it should draw quite a lot of current and the regulator should get hot. So it looks like it's not running, that there's no clock or something like that. I'll just do a quick run through with uh, my oscilloscope here and uh, the first thing that I want to check is that there are voltages on all the pins and uh, the first one is the output from the regulator which is at 5 volts so uh, definitely there's no short and that's a good thing and if we take all the TTL gates one by one we also find that they all have a power so I think here and uh, oh this one looks bad nothing on this pin nothing whatsoever and the chip next to it has power that could be the thing that we're looking for so let's just take a look this is a 74 LS93 this is U21 and um, I've just got the schematic here and uh, if you just look at U21 it is a counter I think yeah okay so I've just been looking around on the internet and uh, yes that's right the chip with uh, no supply is a counter and uh, it supplies some uh, multiplexers for the ROM so if the multiplexer and the counter for the ROM is not working obviously uh, the CPU cannot run and before I try and fix anything I'll just try and uh, connect a little wire between the 5 volts and the, and the pin okay. And we still have no video out. This is the video out pin and uh, that is not working. So uh, something else is wrong. We are still not getting uh, any further. So time to take a look at the schematic and uh, just try a few other things. And uh, first of all, let's just see whether there's any clock. The clock oscillator output is uh, pin 8 on IC20, which is uh, is this one. Yes, so we do have a clock here. It's pretty ugly, but that's okay because the chip is an unbuffered CMOS device. And the frequency is uh, 6.49 megahertz, and that is correct. Now this clock goes to another IC and gets divided down uh, by a factor of 2. And uh, that is IC18 pin 9 and uh, IC18 is here, there. And uh, that is nice, 3.2 MHz, no problem whatsoever. We also have a reset, uh, we should try that out, that is pin 20. 
six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that is high. If we just short the cap, we should see this one drop. Uh, it goes low and up again. So the reset is working. Uh, what we can do next is try to figure out whether the CPU is running. If it is, basically we should see the address buses move up and down as it runs through the program code in the ROM. This is uh, address bit zero. And that looks okay, we have some activity. So it looks like the CPU is running. There's definitely something, although I cannot make it uh, sync. So I'll just have a look at the video output from the ZX80 and see whether it looks like a proper video signal or there's something wrong with the sync. The ZX80 and the ZX81 are working quite differently than uh, other microcomputers of that era. And the main difference is that on these computers everything has been done to reduce the logic and uh, some of the video is actually done by the main CPU. From what I can gather right now is that uh, everything is working on my, my board but it's still generating the wrong video timing and uh, I'm thinking it could be because the program is not executing correctly. I know from the signals on the board that it is running something and for instance the signal M1 which goes low every time it starts executing a new command is actually running. So I have this little Chinese mini pro programmer and um, is actually capable of uh, testing different uh, TTLICs. So I'm gonna plug them in one by one just to show you how to do that. You just take the IC and uh, insert it the right way up and lock it and that's it and then uh, you go to the software. So I'll go here and uh, this is a 7.4 LS7.4 and this is a logic IC so let's see if we can find it on the list and uh, there it is 7.4 it's an LS7.4 and I plugged it in already and click test and it says everything is normal so that chip is working and uh, I'll just continue doing that for all the ICs and uh, I'll Okay, and uh, I'm back, and actually I couldn't find a single broken IC. So I guess we'll just um, plug them back in and uh, continue with our testing. So I thought yeah, maybe there's a RAM issue, and uh, I just happened to have a couple of spare RAMs. So I'll plug those in, and uh, and we'll see whether that helps. And these are supposed to be brand new. Yeah. Brand new. They don't look like they anything. So if, if this is not working, uh, there is a problem on the PCB. There can't possibly be anything else wrong. Well, to be honest, that doesn't look like an improvement. That's also what it looked like earlier. Okay, so just to let you see what it actually is that we are struggling with here. And um, I managed to capture the video output. So as you can see here, uh, this is one line of video. And uh, then there's a gap. For synchronization that means uh, the the beam in the CRT tube in the TV has time to go to the next line and then we paint one more line here we generate data for one more line it looks like it's working and yet it's running too quickly it's not reading from the ROM or the RAM correctly making it run a different program than the one that generates the screen output so yeah this is really tough and um, I guess my next move is uh, to simply ohm the PCB because I have pulled out all the chips, they look good. I've been looking around with my oscilloscope probe and I can't really find anything that looks abnormal. Okay, so now I found something that looks a little bit odd and that is the RAM chip select. And uh, the yellow one, the yellow trace here is the output from the chip that generates the chip select. And the blue one is the input to the RAM chip. So something happens on the way. I don't know if you saw that, but it was like suddenly this thing started running and I didn't really do anything except touching or pressing down a couple of chips. And you see the signal now to the RAM, it looks gorgeous. But why it suddenly started running and uh, didn't start properly when I plugged and unplugged the power, that's a mystery. So let's try it again. I'll plug in the power now and it looks weird. And what did I touch there? I touched something and it started running. Now it turns out that the pin that gets all the video generation started 
is the interrupt pin to the Z80 CPU. Now during video generation, uh, it's using the internal counter in the CPU to save some logic. And um, once that counter reaches a certain level, it will generate an interrupt to the CPU. And I've been looking around on the schematic and I noticed this little thing here where the A6 address line is wired to the interrupt pin. Now this is interesting because if the interrupt line is floating, it means that uh, there will be no video generation. It also means that if I touch the interrupt pin, the thing will get going just because of noise from my finger. Now in Denmark the video signal is generated 25 times per second. But the hum that is picked up from the mains wiring uh, through my finger is at 50 Hz. So that would also explain why that when the video signal is actually working on my ZX80 here, once we have video output, it's running way too fast. So let's take a look at the PCB and see why this interrupt pin is floating. I finally found a little trace down here that has been cut. It was hidden under the heat sink, which normally sits like this. There's a small little cut here. I think a screwdriver slipped or something. I'm not sure what happened, uh, but I'm going to put a solder blob across the cut here and uh, hopefully it works then. Let's just switch it on then. And hey, that looks almost like a stable video picture. Let's try and adjust the horizontal and vertical hold. Hey! And we have video. Let's do something. Enter. One, zero. Print. We have almost video. We have the sync signals, but we don't have the pixel data. Pixel data is coming out of a shift register. The logical next step would be to look at the shift register and see what happens there. We have pin 2 here, and that's a clock. The clock signal is not really a logic signal. Sinclair, what they did was uh, to reduce the pulse width, they put a capacitor in series with a line. And they haven't really bothered for cost reasons to uh, clamp it with a diode. But it goes beyond 2 volts, so it is an active TTL high. So the clock looks fairly okay. What we have here is what comes out of the shift register. And it's just high, basically, with some noise on it. We have clock coming in, we have uh, nothing coming out. And uh, if we just look at the parallel load where the data from the memory is coming in, that is working fine. And we have some data coming in. So we have data in, and uh, we have clock in. We have the parallel load signal for loading the data into the chip, but nothing comes out. So I think the next logical step will be to swap out this chip. And despite it looking okay on the chip uh, tester, in the real world situation, it doesn't look like it's working. And you have a chip here, and just power it up. Oops. There we go, power that. And we have no more game, like, And it's Yep, and uh. Yeah, and it's working. I'm not sure you can see it, there's a little K down here and I can enter some data and print Oh! It's writing poke instead of print So print should be, oh that is plot So yeah, basically it's working, but the ROM image is a ZX81 image and uh, it has a lot more commands and it's able to control a, a little Sinclair printer So basically I have a working ZX80, but it has a ZX81 ROM upgrade. So I think I will uh, change the EEPROM to uh, one with the original ZX80 image in it and uh, then I have a finished completed ZX80. So that's it and uh, quite honestly that was the trickiest job I've done in a really long time. There were so many things wrong with this machine because someone else has tried to repair it and uh, yeah that's what they say these are the most difficult jobs. People who try to fix something actually uh, screw it up more than uh, what they fix. So we've seen the missing heatsink that I made. We have seen a missing voltage regulator that I added in. Then we saw a cut trace on the PCB, which I fixed. And uh, once that was done, there was a display, but no pixel data. Just only the synchronization and a blank screen. Finally, I swapped one IC, the IC that generated the pixel clock. And uh, just for good measure, I programmed the new EEPROM with the original ZX80 software in it. 
So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon.